For a lot of people, a 3 8 inch cordless ratchet is a must-have tool. The least expensive brand we'll be testing is only $60 compared to Makita, which is $189. So the question is, is that Makita really worth an extra $129? We'll see which ratchet offers the highest RPM. We'll test the ratchets for maximum torque. We'll see which ratchet can handle a constant load for 30 seconds. At a price of only $59.99 is this ProStormer brand. It claims to be a very light tool at only 1.85 pounds. 2000 milliamp hour battery. All the ratchets we'll be testing are powered by 12 volts. The Pro Stormer comes with a second battery. Battery charger. Delivers up to 30 foot pounds of torque. Superior fastening speed with 230 RPM. LED indicator provides you with real time battery level at all times. The Pro Stormer even comes with several sockets. Made in China. The Pro Stormer is really light at only 1 pound 13.7 ounces. 843 grams. The balance of a tool is always a factor to consider. The very front of this tool has 472 grams. The back of it, 372. The ProStormer is actually a fairly balanced tool with 56% of the weight on the ratchet end of the tool and 44% on the handle end. I'm going to place the sound meter 24 inches from the ratchet so we can compare the noise levels. And the ProStormer is very close to 81 decibels. The ProStormer definitely has a compact head at only 36.91 millimeters front to back and 30.37 from side to side. At $99.99, .99, the second least expensive brand we'll be testing is the Earthquake XT, which is sold at Harbor Freight. 60 foot-pounds of torque, delivers the power of air, 2 amp hour high capacity battery. It comes with a 12 volt charger. Variable speed paddle with electronic brake for control and versatility. Compact head design for use in tight spaces. Variable speed 0 to 170 RPM. We're going to test that. The Pro Stormer came with two batteries. The Earthquake only comes with one. Battery charger. Compared to the Pro Stormer, there's quite a bit of difference in size. The Earthquake is made in China. The Earthquake uses a variable speed paddle. Neither the Pro Stormer nor the Earthquake have a way to lock the tool out to keep it from accidentally activating inside of a toolbox if something comes in contact with the paddle or the trigger. The Earthquake is 1,352 grams. 2 pounds and 15.7 ounces, so just under 3 pounds for the Earthquake. 839 grams and 511. So the Earthquake isn't quite as well balanced as the Pro Stormer with 62% of the tool weight on the ratchet head side and 38% on the handle side. 86 decibels for the Earthquake, so it's quite a bit louder than the Pro Stormer. The Earthquake claims to have a compact head, but it's actually quite a bit larger than all the other brands, measuring 43.28 millimeters front to back and 40.3 side to side. At $162 for the ratchet, as well as the starter kit, is this Milwaukee brand. 35 foot-pounds of torque, 0 to 250 RPM. It only weighs 1.5 pounds. It's only 10 and 3 quarter inches in length. The Milwaukee is made in China. M12 charger, two 4 amp hour batteries. Made in Korea or Malaysia with additional processing in China. The Milwaukee weighs 2 pounds, 6.2 ounces, 1,083 grams. The Milwaukee does have a lockout feature which keeps the tool from powering up accidentally. 511 grams, 570. So the Milwaukee is the best balanced tool yet with 47% of the weight on the head side of the tool. At very close to 81 decibels, the Milwaukee and the Pro Stormer put out about the same amount of noise. 31.12, that's the best yet. Wow, only 29.66. The Milwaukee has the most compact head design. At a price of $189, the most expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Makita. The tool is made in China. Battery, cell made in Japan, further processing in China. The charger is made in China and so is the tool bag. One two amp hour battery, battery charger. The Makita can be used as both a 3 8 inch drive as well as a quarter inch. The Makita also has a trigger lock. Zero to 800 RPM, we're gonna test that. 35 foot-pounds. Overall length, 13 and 7 sixteenths. The Makita can be used without the battery and used as a regular ratchet. The Pro Storm and the Earthquake don't have lights, but the Milwaukee and the Makita do have them. The Makita's light definitely seems brighter and has a better broadcast. The Makita weighs 1,066 grams. 2 pounds, 5.6 ounces. The Makita is definitely the most balanced tool with a 50% weight balance on each end of the tool. At only 80 decibels, the Makita is the quietest of all four brands. The Makita is 39.35. The Milwaukee and Pro Stormer both have a smaller head size compared to the Makita. So the Makita is the quietest at 80 decibels, Pro Stormer and Milwaukee 81, and Earthquake 86. The Makita is also the most balanced tool with a 50-50 weight distribution, but the Milwaukee is nearly as good at 47 and 53. Since the Pro Stormer is light, it feels about the same as the Milwaukee with its 56-44 weight distribution. The length of the Earthquake, along with the weight distribution, definitely makes a very no noticeable difference when you compare it to the other three brands. In the next test, let's measure the no-load RPM for each ratchet. The Pro Stormer battery is fully charged. The Pro Stormer claims to make 230 RPM, but actually did better than advertised at 319. The Earthquake's battery is fully charged. 
The Earthquake is advertised as being capable of 170 RPM, but actually did better than that at 256. The Earthquake does a terrific job at slower speeds too, reaching as low as 30 RPM. The battery in the Milwaukee is fully charged. The Milwaukee provides the best low RPM control yet at only 15. It also produces the highest RPM at 490. The Makita, which is advertised as being capable of 800 no-load RPM, but unfortunately mine only produced 361, which isn't nearly as fast as the Milwaukee. The minimum RPM was 39. So the Milwaukee came in on top for producing the most RPM, followed by Makita, then the ProStormer, and finally the Earthquake. From the time the trigger or paddle is squeezed until the time the tool goes to work is called trigger delay. So let's do a side-by-side -side comparison with the Earthquake on the left and the ProStormer on the right. They're actually pretty close. Let's slow things down a little. And the Pro Stormer is slightly faster off the line, but the Earthquake has a much better brake. Let's compare the Pro Stormer to the Milwaukee. And the Pro Stormer is barely faster than the Milwaukee, but the Milwaukee is definitely faster off the line than the Earthquake. Neither the Milwaukee nor the Pro Stormer come to a stop quickly like the Earthquake. And the Pro Stormer is actually a fraction of a second faster than Makita, but it's very close. The Makita does have an electronic brake which allows it to stop quickly. So the Pro Stormer has the best trigger speed, but the Milwaukee and Makita make more RPM. So let's see which can spin the 28 lug nuts on the fastest in the next test, beginning with the Pro Stormer. A minute and 52 seconds for the Pro Stormer, which is right at 4 seconds per lug nut. Let's test the Earthquake. The battery is fully charged. The Earthquake is noticeably slower than the Pro Stormer and also seems to make a lot more vibration as well. 2 minutes and 9 seconds for the Earthquake, which is a little over a half a second per lug nut slower than the Pro Stormer. The Milwaukee battery is fully charged. And the Milwaukee is noticeably faster than the Pro Stormer and the Earthquake. Wow, a minute and 22 seconds for the Milwaukee, which is nearly a minute faster than the Earthquake. The Makita's battery is fully charged. Just like the Milwaukee, the Makita is very fast. Minute and 27 seconds for Makita, which is 5 seconds slower than the Milwaukee. Let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison just to see the speed difference. Pro Stormer on the left and Earthquake on the right. The Pro Stormer won the first match. Pro Stormer wins again. And it's three in a row for the Pro Stormer. Pro Stormer on the left and Makita on the right. And it's Makita for the win on the first lug nut. Makita wins again. And it's three in a row for Makita. Makita on the left and Milwaukee on the right. Milwaukee won the first match. Milwaukee wins again, but it's close. Three wins in a row from Milwaukee. I put together this next test rig in order to measure the maximum torque of each brand. The nuts are welded in position, but the bolt still rotates freely. I'll use an electronic torque adapter, which will measure the maximum torque. 18.6 foot-pounds for the Pro Stormer. Not bad for a budget tool. Testing the Earthquake next. 32.8 foot-pounds for the Earthquake. Testing the Milwaukee. 29.9 pounds for Milwaukee. Not bad considering it's geared for a much higher RPM and it's a very compact tool. The Earthquake is in the lead at 32.8 foot-pounds. Let's see if Makita can move into the lead. 32.8 foot-pounds for Makita, so the Earthquake and the Makita are tied for the lead. So if torque is a huge factor for you, the Makita and the Earthquake tied for first at 32.8, but Milwaukee wasn't too far behind at 29.9, and the Pro Stormer finished in a distant fourth at 18.6. The purpose of this next test is to demonstrate the ability of these ratchets to remove a nut from a bolt with slightly rusted or damaged threads. We'll keep an eye on the green rope to count the total rotations in this 30-second test. I went ahead and removed the spark plug, but I left the engine brake in position, which is providing right at 4.3 foot-pounds of resistance. The Pro Stormer is spinning the engine over just fine, but the load has really slowed it down. So the Pro Stormer spun the engine over 38 times in 30 seconds. The Earthquake is off to a great start and is definitely spinning the engine over quite a bit faster than the Pro Stormer. Unfortunately, the Earthquake gave up at 23 seconds and couldn't get going again. 57 rotations for the Earthquake. And the Milwaukee seems unfazed by the 4.3 foot-pounds of resistance and is spinning the engine over quickly. 101 rotations in 30 seconds. Very impressive. And the Makita definitely started off faster than Milwaukee, but it slowed down a little around 17 seconds into the test. 
had barely finished ahead of the Milwaukee at 104 rotations. In the next test, we'll find out if using ratchets manually to loosen really tight fasteners will cause damage. I'll first tighten all the lug nuts to 90 foot-pounds, and then let's use the torque adapter to figure out our breakaway torque. It took 77.6 foot-pounds of torque to break loose the first lug nut. 77.4 for the second, which is quite a bit for a 3 8 inch ratchet. And the Pro Stormer did just fine on the first lug nut. It also did just fine on the second and there's no apparent damage. With the longer handle, the Earthquake offers quite a bit more leverage and didn't have a problem removing both of the lug nuts. With a much shorter handle and a lot less leverage, it definitely took more effort, but the Milwaukee held up just fine removing both of the lug nuts. The Makita's longer handle definitely provided more leverage and it made easy work of both of the lug nuts. Went ahead and fully drained all the batteries, so let's see how long it takes to charge them. All the brands use a 2 amp hour battery, except for the Milwaukee, which uses a 4 amp hour battery. So it's definitely not a fair test, since the Milwaukee has twice the storage capacity, but it'll provide us with some great information. And the Makita is the first one fully charged at 61 minutes and 29 seconds. Not bad for a fully drained battery. And the ProStormer took quite a bit longer at 74 minutes, which is very close to 13 minutes longer than the Makita. The Milwaukee took 79 minutes and 30 seconds to charge a 4 amp hour battery that's actually pretty impressive. And the Earthquake took by far the longest at 91 minutes and 35 seconds. Alright, the batteries are fully charged, so let's see how long the tools will run without a load. In addition to being able to lock the trigger on the Makita to keep it from accidentally powering up, it also powers itself off after one minute of continuous use. So I'll have to hold the Makita and power it up once every minute. Unfortunately, the Earthquake, which has the longest charge time at over an hour and a half, also has the shortest run time at just under 28 minutes. It also has the slowest RPM, and we'll see how that impacts things in just a minute. After 28 minutes of runtime, all the tools are pretty hot, but not to the point of causing damage. The Makita, which runs at a much higher RPM than the Earthquake, is finished at just over 30 minutes. The Pro Stormer did a pretty impressive job at 49 minutes and 40 seconds, which is very close to 19 more minutes of runtime compared to the Makita. The Milwaukee, as expected with its 4 amp hour battery, totally crushed the competition at 71 minutes and 20 seconds. RPM and battery life both have a huge impact on how much work you can get done on a full charge. So going back to our test setup that had 28 lug nuts, the Milwaukee Ratchet installs a lug nut every 2.93 seconds. Makita needed 3.11 seconds, Pro Stomer 4 seconds, and Earthquake 4.61. Assuming the threads are well lubricated, the Milwaukee could install around 1,457 lug nuts in a single charge under perfect conditions. The Pro Stomer could install 745, the Makita 585, and the Earthquake 364. While we don't know the number of charge and discharge cycles for each battery, the Earthquake battery is going to have to be charged a lot more often than the other brands and is likely to wear out a lot sooner. Milwaukee definitely seems to have done the best in this showdown, but I also really like the Makita quite a bit. If you need a light duty tool for occasional use, the Pro Stormer actually did a fairly good job. The Earthquake seems like a decent tool as well, but unfortunately the battery seems like the weak point in the tool. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested, so I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. I read and reply to as many comments as possible. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care, and I look forward to next time.